On September 21, 2019, deputies from the Williamson County Sheriff's Office responded to a domestic violence call at an Austin apartment complex. A female deputy arrived first and spoke with the neighbor who had made the call. After gathering information, she approached the apartment of the woman involved in the reported incident. The incident was recorded by body cam. I have to. Yeah, I'm glad you did. Which one is she? What's her name? Yeah, I'll talk to y'all in a second. Hey, let me talk to you real quick. Yeah. Do you need EMS? No, I'm fine. Come out here. Come out here. I really just want to deal with y'all people. All right. Well, we'll make sure you're okay. I'm fine. 16 through 6 County, we're code, th code 4. Uh, she does not need EMS. So, what happened? Nothing. Look up for me. What's on your neck? What happened? Nothing happened. So I have witnesses saying something happened. So are you trying to protect him? No, I just really don't like dealing with y'all. I really don't want to deal with y'all. I really don't. Okay. So... I don't need to talk to y'all. I really don't. Do you have your ID on you or anything? No, I don't. So what's your last name? How do you spell your first name? Why do you need all this stuff? Because we have to document that we're here. Okay. Okay. Where is the guy that allegedly, I mean, we I don't, don't, we don't. I don't know where he's at. He so he left? He left. Does he live in this apartment complex? No, he does not. You don't know which way he went? I don't know, and if I did, I wouldn't tell you. 1636K94, victims advising she does not know which way he went. So, were y'all, I'm trying to figure out why your friends called the cops. What friend? Or your witnesses. Whoever was over here that called us. Okay. So what? We got, we got into an argument. Okay. That's it. That's it. Literally. Okay. It was nothing physical? Nothing physical. Where are the marks on your neck from? We got into my necklace right here. No. This right here. What is that from? Does it really matter? Yes. It doesn't matter. make sure you're okay. I'm fine, ma'am. So? I'm fine. Like, literally, I'm fine. Okay. I get, I'm going to be honest with you, I get a rash talking to y'all. I do not want to talk okay. to you, and especially Williamson County. Y'all have a really bad reputation. I have bad okay. encounters with y'all. I do not want I'm to not going to hurt you. I know you aren't. Mentioned. Okay, really so we're just, we need your to cooperation. You. I know, and I'm Do you want to press charges? I do not. Okay. Me. I do not. Despite the woman's reluctance, the deputy gathered the necessary information. But the woman expressed discomfort with the Williamson County Police, citing past unpleasant interactions. She clearly stated that she did not wish to press charges against her boyfriend, even when asked about the scratch marks on her neck. Legally, since the woman provided her name, date of birth, and expressed her desire not to press charges, the appropriate action for the deputy would be to leave the scene and complete her report without further escalation. A relevant legal case to consider is Town of Castle Rock v. Gonzalez, 2005. In this case, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that law enforcement does not have a constitutional duty to protect individuals by enforcing a restraining order, which is typically seen as discretionary police action. This can be extended to domestic violence situations where, if a victim is unwilling to press charges and there is no immediate danger, law enforcement officers may not be required to take further action beyond gathering information and reporting. Is there anyone else in the My apartment with you? Is here. Okay, can I talk to her? Yes. Okay. Wait, you wanna no, go get... no, I really don't want you to talk. Okay. Well, it's not if she business. wants to talk to me, that I can talk to her. She does not want to talk. How to do me. I know that? Because I told her that she had nothing to do with this. Okay. Well, let me try to make contact with her. Do you want to go back inside for the time no, being? No, I don't. I really don't. Okay. It's well, then step over here no. for me. So what? What's the deal? What is your problem? First I'm trying to figure out what's going I'm on. I'm trying to here. tell you, ma'am. She had nothing to do with this. I called her after because who I called the my... cops. I didn't call the cops. I'm asking who called the cops, guys. Those people. I don't know. You don't know them. I don't know them. I just never met those people in my life. Okay. I don't know them. Have y'all been arguing before? Like no. what? Why no. are people concerned then? That's the no. thing. I've never known. No. Okay. What's your sister's name? My Are you sure she's not the one that called the cops? It was either them or your sister that called the cops. I was worried. My sister. Okay. Well, 
if you want to just go back inside for the time being, and then we're going to meet up with my partners and see what's okay. going on. Thank you. So, I got her name and date of birth. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to be cooperative. I see some marks on her neck that might be fresh. She's saying she's denying medical attention. She said she didn't want to talk to us. Sister doesn't want to talk. They live in here. So... Even when she's in my house, I'm like, well, we gotta find the guy that allegedly did this. So she didn't give direction, travel, description, anything. She's like, he left. I don't know where he went. Third level Dickerson. So we need to see if this guy's inside your apartment. Who else is in here? My sister. Um, no, no, we really don't. We really don't. Stay here. You need, you need to go in with him. Okay, stop. Just stop. I don't want to try that. Just, I just want to go in. Stop. Listen to me. Don't stop with Kizzy. I'm not doing it. Relax. I'm not doing it. Relax. Oh my gosh, you're a psycho. I'm not doing it. All right, ma'am, you're gonna have to calm down. It's running your mouth. Calm down. Listen, okay. You understand? Listen, you need to understand how we can talk to you. Yes. Okay. Yes, quit talking. Please let me get up. Please. Quit talking. You're hurting. Quit talking. Shut your mouth and quit talking. Okay. <laughs> And I can talk to you and let you know why we're doing what we're doing and what's going on, regardless of whether or not you want to cooperate. Please we're going to do what attorney. we need to do. Call the attorney. Call the attorney. Please, just lay there. Relax so we can talk to you. Call our attorney. Call the attorney right now. Call the lawyer right now. Listen. Relax so we can talk to you. We're just trying to talk to you and make sure you're okay. Because you're, we're not, not trying you're to not, hurt you. You're hurting me, though. You're we're hurting not me. Trying to hurt you. I wasn't hurt before, and you're hurting me. You're gonna relax. I haven't felt pain, and you're making me feel pain. Relax. People. Relax. Where okay. are you hurting? Where you're hurting, you're hurting my arms. You're hurting my. Okay. You're literally putting so much pressure on me. Okay. You to relax, though. I just relax. Well, I was just trying to talk to you. And I didn't want to talk just to you. Up. That's what? it. Okay. Okay. Side. The deputies handcuffed the woman despite her pleas, handling her as if she were a criminal. She expressed that, while she wasn't hurt by the alleged domestic abuse, she was now in pain due to the deputies' actions. The footage shows her in an uncomfortable and possibly painful position, with her arm twisted in a way that clearly causes discomfort. This highlights the excessive physical force used by the deputies. Under relevant Texas penal code, Officers are only authorized to use force when it's reasonable and necessary for an arrest, maintaining security, or in self-defense. Here we go. Here we go. Roll over. Just want to relax, okay? Yes. Hold on over there. Do not get up. Stay seated. Stay with her. Do you need medical attention? No. Okay. Y'all have the worst reputation. We're just trying to talk to her. I understand. She's gonna just stay over there for me. Get over it. Listen. Dude, okay? Just stop. We Just were stop. here. Listen but you're not me. helping me. You're making it so much worse. We tried to come help you. I'm not. Okay, I'm not hurt. Okay. Just, okay. Just, just sit there. Don't touch me. I don't know. Sit. Don't touch me. Please. Just get, get your hands sit. off of me. I'm fine. Just, just don't touch me. Please. Don't touch me. So what? What? Like. 
I'm yeah. trying to figure out what's going on. That's what I'm trying to figure. She's overreacting. Just please, okay? I'm, I'm on your side. Just don't move. Don't talk. Okay? You're making things worse for yourself. Stop. Enough is enough. Okay? <laughs> enough is enough. It's time to get out of this situation. Okay? Why would you go with someone like this? Stop. 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 1636 to 1442, you're calling me? I'm so over this, dude. Like, these people are psycho. I've heard about Williamson Young. Y'all weren't even supposed to go into my apartment. Y'all, with, with what? I'm literally gonna press charges on y'all. We have a possible felony. Possible felony? Yes. For what? For who? For Williamson Young. He's not, 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 he's not,
Do you, are you fearful of him, of his actions? Okay, I would always suggest you not be here. If she doesn't care about your safety, you don't need to be here. But if that's how y'all, if that's how y'all do it, that's the understanding y'all have. Do what you need to do. Okay, do you want to leave now while we're here, or are you going to stay here with? Okay. And you, you made a statement out there that you wanted okay. to die. No, Are no, you like feeling that. suicidal? No, 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 I swear to God, I'm great. Okay. I was just in that moment. I'm just okay. I understand you're upset, but like you said, you cannot. I don't want to go hands on with you. I'm here to help you. Okay. Okay. Hernandez pleaded guilty to official oppression, other charges being dropped. He was sentenced to six months of deferred adjudication. He voluntarily left the force in 2020. The woman filed a lawsuit and was awarded $200,000 in settlement by Williamson County. On August 30th, 2018, in the early morning hours, Carl Carawalla and plain-clothed police officer with the San Antonio Police Department saw a pickup truck parked behind a shopping center. Inside, delivery driver Jose Castro was dozing off during a break. Suspecting that the van might be linked to recent burglaries, Officer Carawalla called for backup. Officers Michael Thornton, Kimberly Corey, and Sean King arrived on scene. The interaction was captured on Officer Thornton's body camera. Ghost call it, Carl? You're in the truck! Come in with your hands up! San Antonio Police! Contact! Come in with your hands up! San Antonio Police! Let me see some hands! I am the police! Come out! The police here! Ven aquí! Vamos arriba! Saita! Ven aquí! Saita! Police! Por que no? You've been a kill. I'm coming to get your. Hey, listen, listen, you wrong, you wrong. Come here. You're wrong. I'm not. I'm not doing nothing wrong. I do. I do a delivery for for mission, mission veterinary. You you crazy? San Antonio police. You understand that I am the police, right? Yes, sir. Then you need to come out that truck right now, sir. Watch yourself, watch yourself! Come out of that truck! Watch out, Kim! Turn the car on. Get us Eagle, get us Eagle. San Antonio police, come out of the truck! Is he going out the other side? Get out of the car! 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 Get
When Officer Carawalla and the others arrived, Mr. Castro, not believing they were actual police officers, refused to exit his vehicle. Instead, he called 911 and turned on his truck's emergency flashing lights to signal for help. Failing to follow an officer's instructions can be seen as interfering with their duties, which can give officers a reason to arrest someone. However, to be guilty of interference, the person must be aware that their actions are risky and unjustifiable. If Mr. Castro were charged with interference, he could argue that he genuinely believed the officers were not real police, so he wasn't being reckless. Even though Mr. Castro might have a defense, officers only need a reasonable suspicion to detain someone and ask them to exit the vehicle. Eagle, we are going to be south of 1604. Uh, we're in a big open field. Uh, we do have the red and blues activated on the uh, patrol car. This guy's got the driver door open, dispatch. Send me a canine. Send me a canine. Expedite. That's all right. The canine's on the way. You're going to get bit if you don't come out of that truck. The canine is going to bite you if you do not exit the vehicle. I got nothing. I got no view on him. And uh, roll us a Spanish speaker. He's speaking English, but maybe he'll understand it's some Spanish. Stop reaching for sir! Stop it! You got a whole lot of police rolling down on you. You need to exit the vehicle. Exit the vehicle, sir! I don't care what you think. I need you to exit the vehicle. He's turned the truck on. He's not coming out. I think he called 911. Senor! Manos, ahora! I tried that. Manos, ahora! What's he doing, Carl? The body camera footage does not show Mr. Castro being removed from the vehicle. But according to a document released by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, Officer Carawalla approached the truck from the passenger door and pointed his AR-15 at Mr. Castro's forehead, while Officers King and Thornton approached the driver's side and attempted to remove Mr. Castro. Mr. Castro pulled away and flailed his arms to avoid being removed. Officer King then struck Mr. Castro in the head and leg, pointed his firearm at Mr. Castro's head, causing him to exit the vehicle. 
Once Mr. Castro was out, Officer King struck his left arm twice. Officer Thornton executed a leg sweep, and the three officers took Mr. Castro to the ground to handcuff him. Officer Carawalla handcuffed Mr. Castro while Officers King and Thornton applied pain compliance techniques. The Supreme Court's 1989 case, Graham v. Connor, established three factors for determining excessive force. The severity of the crime, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat, and whether the suspect is actively resisting or attempting to flee. Given that Mr. Castro did not pose an apparent danger and was simply refusing to comply, the pointing of a firearm at his head is likely to be deemed excessive force. San Antonio PD's use of force policy states officers may only use deadly force to prevent imminent serious bodily injury or death and prohibits brandishing a weapon as a threat unless reasonable in the situation. Therefore, Officer Carawalla and Officer King's actions likely violated this policy. No, I told you. Hey, sir, listen. No, I don't have nothing, sir. After handcuffing Mr. Castro and placing him in a police vehicle, Officer Thornton muted his body camera for more than seven minutes. Police officers can mute body cameras for a period of time depending on the situation, and there is no law against it, and it is not a criminal offense. In another matter, the search of Mr. Castro's truck potentially violated the Fourth Amendment. As the Supreme Court ruled in a precedent-setting case, warrantless searches of vehicles are only permitted when the arrested person is unsafe and within reach of the vehicle. This exception does not apply because Mr. Castro was handcuffed in the squad car. Inventory searches of seized vehicles should not be used to search for incriminating evidence. Mr. Castro's vehicle was not seized, no inventory was taken, and the search with the dog suggests that they were looking for evidence. Therefore, the search likely violated the Fourth Amendment. Right, looking for safe burglars are hitting between certain times up in the Peru area, right? We're working with plainclothes detectives, checking suspicious cars, people parked out across the street, lookouts, etc. One of our detectives comes across a box truck, like a rental box truck from Enterprise, one of the big ones parked out behind some bushes off on a little private drive 
that goes to nothing off of the, the main road, right? He pulls in, sees that the driver door is open. Okay, doesn't approach, calls for us because we're in uniform, we're in a market patrol car. We roll up, we start walking up, and I say, hey, you know what? Let's see if somebody's in there. Let's call out. Maybe somebody's in there, they'll come out so we don't, you know, get ambushed. So, call her out, hey, you in the vehicle, show me your hands, come out. Somebody answers up. So now we know there's for sure somebody in the mm -hmm. truck, right? Spanish. Spanish, English. So I order him out in Spanish. He keeps yelling, no, 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 I'm not doing anything, no, no, no. Then he starts saying that we're not the police, right? So I go back to the patrol car, activate all the red and blue lights I have on my police car, get on the PA system. San Antonio police, you need to come out of the car. The detective has gone around the side of the truck, clearly visible to the AP, shows him his badge, vest, police on his vest, okay? Another officer gets here. Oh, he's making a phone call. He's calling uh, 911. 911 is telling him, those are the police. You need to get out of the truck. Still not getting out of the truck. We get another officer here. We go to approach the truck. At this point, and he's poked his head out a few times and made eye contact with me. He knew I was the police. I have no doubt in my mind. He knows I'm the police. Tell him, hey, get out of the truck. He says, no, 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 no. He's not getting out of the truck. Immediately, we grab onto him. He starts grabbing. Oh, and at one point when we were ordering him out of the truck, he turns the vehicle on like he's going to drive away. So we all pull way back because we don't want to get ran over by this big truck. Uh, I get the truck turned off. We get him out. Um, he's still not putting his hands behind his back, still not complying with orders. So eventually we end up taking him to the ground and getting him handcuffed. Now, he, he says that he's here doing deliveries from Dallas. He has a CDL, commercial driver's license. So he knows what to do when he's stopped by the police. Okay? Uh, but we don't have anything besides the resisting search on him. Would you take that? We're being told that you wouldn't take a, just a straight resisting search without an actual charge. Okay, that's fine with me. I mean, I really don't feel like taking this guy to jail. He's just an idiot, and I think he was... He knew we were the police, but he still didn't want to cooperate with us. So, I think we'll just SP him, and then we'll just kick him loose. The only thing is, because we had to take him to the ground. And if we would have got to the truck, if, if we... When we were at the, the door of the truck, we didn't immediately grab onto him and try to yank him. We were like, hey, dude, come out of the truck. And he still didn't come out of the truck. We're the police. you got to listen to us. Yeah, you know? Truck. Tell him to cancel it. Okay. We will SP him and file it at large and see what happens. All right. Yeah, thanks for all your help. Thanks. Bye. So she was... She said that we don't have PC to search him. search somebody that's in a suspicious place at night. I said suspicious person, suspicious place at a suspicious time in an area where the MO for the burglars is to use big box trucks to take ATMs and other safes and then go out to these abandoned places. Because what did we just recover the other safes from? From the, the other ATMs out here. Yeah. Same thing, right? They were in a stolen truck. I told her all of that. that. Now, he didn't just go on because he's got no one. Looking at it, he just looks like he was pushing y'all away. He didn't go. No, he didn't no. like okay, well, try then, to then, then, kill us. Then, then, but he did grab back on. I, yeah. he grabbed so, onto the wheel. Okay, is he? Oh, we gotta make sure he's coherent enough to. Yeah. To operate. If he is, I mean, he told me I was out. I was out, and then we can cover ourselves with that. And I agree that he was out for about maybe the first yeah, minute. We were out here for a while. But we were out here for a long time, we here and the fact that he got time. and he was coherent time. enough to dial nine one one. And talk to them. And talk to them. And the 911 operator is telling him, sir, they are the police. You need to get out of the truck. And he's still not. And then I was cool all the way up to the point where we approached the truck. And me and King and Kim are standing there in what front of him. We'd be justified to, quote, unquote, shoot the guy, right? So If we're going to be justified to do that, then we are in the right place at the right time doing a lawful duty. Yeah. How can we not book him? I'll go with that. As long as you call DA... That's I thought the ones who's going to accept it. Put it in there like that, one, yep. please. I will. Because I don't want this guy coming back and suing anybody. That's my thing is, what's the rule? They go use the force. Yeah. They got to go to jail or the hospital for well, ED. Or make sure but if you SP him and you still file it, and well, then it's on them, not you know, on us. You know what? So I will leave a copy on your desk and we will file it at large. No, so, you know what we could do? And it's going to be up to the Sarge there. You can go to the judge. You don't have to go to the DA. The officers found nothing illegal in Mr. Castro's vehicle, 
and no evidence that could incriminate him. Approximately one hour later, Officer Thornton met with the assistant district attorney, who informed him that there was no probable cause for the search and that no charges would be filed against Mr. Castro. Officer Thornton then returned to his vehicle to release Mr. Castro. Come here, sir. You want to go to jail today? Huh? Do you want to go to jail? Or do you want to go about your day you, in your life? You're the boss. I, you're the boss. I can't do nothing, sir. You, you, you do whatever what you want. I do my job. It's not what I want. I'm doing my job. You want to talk about doing jobs? I was doing my job protecting the citizens of San Antonio and their property today. But uh, I'm apologizing for maybe got nervous a lot, but uh, what I do is my job delivers. That's what I do. Uh huh. And Nothing. what's my job? I I understand that the other police say he say you're looking for somebody, but I don't know. You don't know, right? No, you don't know. All you know is that we're the police. And what do you do when the police contact you? Exactly what they say, when they say it, how they say it. Correct? Yes or no? Yeah, but... Uh, no, 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 but. It's a yes or no. You're talking yourself into I, going to jail I got tonight, scared. sir. I got scared when somebody when somebody got a gun, which, like that. You know, it's scary. So I, you saw that I had a gun I, and I was the I police? Saw, I saw another side, uh, somebody shooting, because they, they want to nobody shoot. Nobody shoot, nobody shot know. anything. No guns were but fired out here. I'm apologizing for that, but uh, I tell you, when, never, never police do that. Never, never, never. I really want to take him to jail, Carl. No, listen, take I apologize. Him, take him to the judge, please. God bless you because because you do your job, buddy. God bless you. God bless you. Okay. Because that's your boss. And just make sure he knows that my real problem is when that there's three policemen at his door, he still won't come out of the damn truck. I don't understand what he didn't understand about that part of it. You were told what to do before you ever saw a gun. Don't give me that crap, okay? There's a case that's going to be filed on you, most likely. So if I were you, I'd start trying to brush up on your law because we're also going to contact the DPS about your, your uh, commercial driver's license. You understand that? There's a chance that your license... You're held to a higher up. standard than most people. I'm you have a, you have his license? Yeah, I got all this stuff. After being released... Mr. Castro went to the hospital for injuries from the officer's use of force, including pain, swelling, and visible trauma on his hands. He testified that the encounter caused him mental and emotional distress, nightmares, and physical pain, affecting his personal and professional life. On August 28, 2020, he filed a federal lawsuit against officers Corey, Thornton, Karawala, and King for excessive force, unreasonable seizure, unreasonable search, failure to intervene, and unreasonably prolonged search and seizure. The district court granted the officers qualified immunity for the initial seizure, but denied it for the prolonged arrest, truck search, excessive force, and failure to intervene. The officers appealed. On April 11th, 2024, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals reversed the denial for the prolonged arrest, but upheld it for the other claims. They ruled the search was unjustified and the use of force excessive. The case was returned to the district court and is pending.